On the contrary, I wanted to talk about Marcus Rashford. We've just done a video on Trent Alexander-Arnold, so if you guys haven't watched that, make sure you guys watch that. I'll put it in the description below, uh, whether he's world-class or not. Um, so we're going to talk about Marcus Rashford. If he's, um, I think this is a very straightforward um, answer to this one. I do not think he's world-class, and I never thought Marcus Rashford was world-class. And I absolutely love the guy. I love what he's done off the field in terms of you know helping the children. And so I think he's MBE. Uh, yeah, MBE. Yeah. MBE. And I think um, I think that's that's phenomenal. I think what he's done for the community is great. Um, I think he's, a, he's he's a good guy. He seems like a good guy. But in terms of a player, um, I cannot put someone that performs in little glimpses throughout the season as a world class player. I just can't. And I know he's done that like at the start internationally. He's done that in the club level as well. But. I think he's far from it. I think he's further than Trent. I think he's further than any player out there that, that is on their, on their way to become world class. What do you make of Marcus Rashford? I I would I would disagree on that. I would disagree. No way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and look, don't get me wrong. Some from time to time, I've been known to have a soft spot for Man United, but I do think Rashford is ahead of I guess Trent Alexander on when you when you look at the whole world class debate. And I think the, easy, the easiest way, I guess, you could cop out of that is because there's not many world-class fullbacks in the Premier League mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I do, I do think there are world-class wingers in the Premier League, mm -hmm. and that's why it is so easy to see Rashford as further away from being world-class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, players like Salah, um, Bukayo Saka, Bukayo Saka, definitely world-class player. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have Julian Alvarez, who's... I would say well on his way to becoming world class and yeah. you have so many We've got Mbappe, Vinny Jr, Leo yeah, you know, Sane as well at this age and he's still performing numbers for yeah. behind the season um, so, yeah. there's, there's so many world class wingers out there mm -hmm. and, and a lot of top quality wingers as well and I, I guess Rashford is in my opinion really teetering on that line of where he sits yeah, for me, like I just, I just don't see it. Like I'm not, like I'm saying that Rashford at his best, he's unstoppable. Mm. But I feel like even Rashford at his best is not the overall sort of package that you want in a winger because he does go missing in games. And obviously, when you go missing in games and you pop under the 80th minute and you score the winner, I think all is forgiven. Yeah, rightfully so. But I just feel like he just hasn't done that for long enough. I just feel like when the team really needs him, I think being, you know. A Manchester United boy born yeah. in Manchester, you know he needs to be the one that needs to sort of lead the team when currently what they do, what you know what United are facing right now. And I just feel like that lack of fight in him. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe it's a falling out with the manager at this moment in time, or maybe it's he's trying to force a move. But I just don't feel like I think consistency is the biggest thing when it comes to judging a player and when when you're trying to see if he's world class. Yeah. They're knocked out of the Champions League right now. They they they're coming like somehow they're coming still fourth or fifth mm -hmm. in the in, in the in the Premier League. The performances have been abysmal. He's been benched, and whenever he comes on, he hasn't contributed nothing. No tracking back. He it's it's been abysmal the performances so far, and he's done that throughout the course of the past couple of years. Like it's just patches. It's just patches and patches and patches of play, and that's it. And I'm just so sick and tired of people like trying to like plead his case. <laughs> so I'm like. I don't know, like I just don't see anything in him and I don't see him because now he's not a young guy anymore. Yeah. Trent we were talking about in the other video was 24, Bakaya Saka is 22. Yeah. You know, Martinelli is still young as well. There's other, uh, you know, fucking Isaac as well is very young as well. Yeah. So like, these are young players, he is now 28 this year. So, 28 years of age, he's coming to his 30s and I don't think he's going to ever reach the heights that he ever did mm. if he keeps performing in patches like these. Yeah, I can't, I can't I, you made a lot of good points there and I can't disagree with a lot of them to be yeah. fair. but. You, you, we, we have this same argument about Trent Alexander Arnold, and yeah. you look at those integral part of parts of the the team, and you think of Manchester United. The first, I guess, two players you think of are mm -hmm. Marcus Rashford, <coughs> Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, you think Manchester United, and you're going to those two players, at least in the current generation. I'm not talking about the past. Mm -hmm. And if you if you if you make that comparison between Trent Alexander Arnold and Marcus Rashford, you have Marcus Rashford. He's Besides Harry Kane, he's one of the main men for England. Is he though? He is. He is one of the main me men for England. I don't think he starts for England anymore, and he hasn't started for England anymore, in the, in, even in the World Cup as well. Like he's been. Yeah, I mean, he that's hasn't been the best. That's that, that's due to his form in the league, and, yeah, and you, we can't you can't hide behind it. But yeah, if you look throughout the years, um, he came up in a very very good Manchester United team. You know, yeah. he had he had the experience around him. He had quality. You know, players he can learn off. Really good forward players. Mm. Um, you know, Ed Edinson Cavani, who I think is 
Um, besides Karim Benzema and maybe Robert Lewandowski, I think he has some of the best movement off the ball. Yeah. Um, one of the best presses of the ball, similar to Wayne Rooney. Mm-hmm. He had all those influences, I guess, coming into the team. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, those crucial, crucial age where you're, like you're 26, 7, 8, where I guess you're really going into both your mental and physical prime. Yeah. He doesn't have those players or, you know, you have a Cristiano Ronaldo who's come to Man United arguably past his prime but he's still a quality player and he has that mentality but now he's gone he's been kicked out by the coach mm-hmm. you know Cavani also been shipped out and you look at the players around him you look at Garnacho you look at I mean another player with world class potential hasn't made it Anthony Martial oh, yeah. Rasmus Hoyland and Bruno Fernandes now I would say he is again I think he is world class but I don't know if he's quite the same caliber as Kevin De Bruyne, but yeah, you know, yeah, you you, he's he's him. You have Bruno Fernandez, you have Casemiro, Rafael Varane. These players all have the experience, but what are they? What are they offering to Rashford in terms of leading the line um, going forward? They offer very little in terms of guidance, and you know, I, I guess it's really easy to look at stats. It's really easy to look at style of play and all that, but I, I think some of these intangible things get m- missed out from the game. No, I understand that, but my point was like, that's why I brought up his age about being a, he, he's 27 years of age, he doesn't need that guidance anymore. Like, it, it's, it's different, like, if we're talking about Garnacho, we're talking about, um, you know, um, what's the other one, uh, the other player as well, Garnacho or any other young, younger players. But my thing is that he doesn't need that guidance anymore because he's not that young up and coming player that he is. He's the person that needs to provide that guidance for the young players that come up uh, from the academy or come up, or young players that come into uh, to Man United. So I just feel like, I think it's a bit of a cop out in that case. And I, you talk about Bruno Fernandes, but I think Bruno Fernandes has has been a shining light in the Man United teams. I know he's got his, you know, his attitude is a bit off. You know, he whines a lot, and I don't really particularly agree with that. And I hate that side of him. But in terms, when it comes to performances, he gives it his all. You could tell that he's really trying, even though like the team is, you know, performing not to not at its best. But the, we, I think that United fans like they just expect that from Rashford as well. What they expect from Bruno. Just, yeah. just still lead the line. You are that player now. You are one of the senior players. You know, you are considered one of the best in the world at in patches when you mm-hmm. perform. And when you perform, he is unstoppable. Like beginning of last year, like he was unstoppable. And that was a comparison between Saka and Rashford. Mm-hmm. And that was a big comparison going on. But now it's like he's nowhere to be seen. Like the effort is what people are talking about. No one's talking about his ability to play yeah. or score goals or provide, provide assists. It's just the little effort where you lose the ball, you're not tracking back. It's Manchester United, like you know, like <laughs> it's Manchester United we're talking about here. That's a big, big saying that you know everyone yeah. says. But like, that's what happened. You, that used to happen back in the day. You lose the ball, you chase it back. I mean, we we hear that from like under sixes. But like, if you're a professional footballer, you're not doing that, and you're one of the, you know, and you're playing for one of the clubs that's in the limelight every single day, you, people are going to catch up to that. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't disagree with that. But the the way I look at it is. You think of the world-class teams, you think of the most elite teams. Mm. Manchester United's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Ma- Manchester United is an elite brand, but mm. it's not an elite sporting establishment. Yeah. Uh, I- again, with the, with, I understand what you mean by he's, he's 28, you expect him to you know, take mm. up that leadership. And I, I do think he's a leader within that dressing room, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you don't, have, you don't have a coach who I think really commands that respect. Um, Eric Ten Hag has had two seasons now. Um, he has he has spent money, and you'd expect that you know you'd build an elite team around your players like Bruno Fernandez, Marcus Rashford. Mm. But you look at that front line, and you think you think of a world class front line, and that, that the uh, the the two that come in, three that come into mind, um, uh, uh, Neymar, Suarez, Messi. Yeah. Um, even yeah, even Sterling, Sturridge, yeah. um, Suarez, mm. uh, Robert Lewandowski, mm-hmm. um, Leroy Sané, Muller, Vinicius, Rodrigo, Benzema. Where where I don't I don't see Garnacho, Hoyland, and Rashford fitting in that. It's yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, but at the moment, Manchester United are very little more than a laughing stock. Yeah, hundred um, yeah. percent. Like I said, I do have a soft spot for Manchester United, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm loving every bit of it at the moment. Like the shambolic of performances that are coming up. But they recently got knocked out of the Champions League. But yeah, yeah look, I do agree with you. I do, I do agree with you saying like what what he has like very little support, if you want to call it support, mm-hmm. like right next to him. 
Um, however, I just feel like I think it's the little things that matter. And now it's like very clear to see that there might be some sort of falling off or there might be some sort of, you know, issues going on internally with the manager or, you know, maybe with his mental, you know, mental being. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously he had this thing with his missus where he was, you know, yeah. broke up with his missus and then got back together again. So that might be playing up in his mind. But I think the best, what do you think the best sort of solution for Rashford would be? I think it would be to find a new club. I, I, I think it would be to find a new yeah. club. I know Manchester United fans are not going to like that, but yeah. honestly, some of them might because, you know, when, when Marcus Rashford does play well, mm -hmm. You get everyone crawling out the woodwork saying how world class he is, and mm -hmm. and I, I the reason I agree with that is I know some sometimes he goes missing, yeah, um, and you know that could be because of how Eric Ten Hag plays because it's it's been a similar case with Garnacho where there's mm -hmm. a lack of tracking back, yeah, so it could be a, a system issue. Um, he doesn't get much support from people around him, but mm -hmm. the world class players come up in world class moments, and <coughs> Marcus Rashford for me is one of those players. He could go missing for 89 minutes of that of that game and yeah. it takes him one minute. He is that sort of player who he can come up with that goal out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what separates the world-class players mm -hmm. from the very top-level players. I agree. Consistency is a mm -hmm. big thing. You want you want your players week in, week out, at least an eight out of eight out of ten, at yeah. least for the world-class players. And I think he does have that potential, but Again, I think I think it's more a case of the intangible. I think it's more of a mental thing. Mm -hmm. When he does well, everyone's singing his praises. But when the team does poorly, the first player that's the scapegoat for Manchester United day in, day out, before De Gea, yeah, okay, seems to be Marcus Rashford. Right. The fans jump all over his back. Yeah. The minute he doesn't perform. Let me let me let me close it off with this mm -hmm. then. Like if do you ever think he's going to reach that potential that we're talking about? Like when it comes to world class, international level, as well as club level, from now? I, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's... Time is running out. Time is yeah. definitely running out in terms of his career. And he could, he could well be one of those players where, you know, he was very good at a young age, but he never really reached his potential. Could have been, yeah. But I think, I think a move is definitely on the cards. I think um, a fresh start at a club, you know, where... All the all, all the fans back him, you know. He gets backing from other, at least, at least, not world class players, but at least top level players, which yeah. I think Man United definitely lack at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent. If he has that support and he has all that weight off his shoulders, you know, maybe he can rediscover his form and you know mm -hmm. play with that freedom of mm -hmm. not having to worry about every single time if I lose the ball, I'm going to hear all of Old Trafford moaning yeah. at me because yeah. that's. Let's be honest here, Old Trafford is the closest thing you have to a museum when it doesn't go well. I mean, yeah, sorry, a, a library when library. it doesn't go well. Yeah. Um, but I think if he, if, he gets, if he gets a move to a team where he can start fresh, yeah. have that freedom, I think you know, he can be coached into a world-class player. I think there's... I, I have my doubts about Ten Hag and yeah. The world class winger Ten Hag brought over was Anthony, which is, you know. 80 million, man. Down an 80 time. million fidget, 80 million pound fidget spinner. Fidget I mean, spinner. <laughs> nah. Marcus Rashford, I think he has, I think he has the potential still to achieve. Yeah. And time is running out. I think he has maybe one or two years before, mm. you know, wingers need the pace. Yeah. They need that physicality. They, he has all of that. He has the height. He's, he can finish. Yeah. He can dribble. He can pick a pass if he yeah. needs to. I agree to that to some extent, but I just feel like I just feel like even if he manages to get a move out, you know, outside of a different league or a different Premier League, league uh, Premier League team, I just feel like he's not going to reach that level anymore. I just feel like that sort of window that he that he had, where he had to kick on and just be consistently performing, I think that's gone. You know, I don't think he's going to be world class. I I want him to be world class just because you know, obviously, the kind of person that he is, and you want people like that to sort of succeed, but. At the end of the day, um, I feel like, yeah, time is running out. He's 27 years of age, and I think he, he himself is looking for a cop out as well. And I, mm. I hope like I hope it works out for him, but in my opinion, I don't think he's going to reach world-class yeah. levels. Definitely world-class human being. Yeah. Top-level top player, but <laughs> I guess we have to wait and find out, don't we? Yeah.